I put you in a situation where you had to make a choice. You had to say, am I going to own this or not? Most of you are going, are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? That's not what a leader is, by the way. A person of influence doesn't wait. Every boss loves those employees that really own their positions. Those are the ones we want a hundred of. So we start to champion the wrong things. We start championing numbers. Yes, we celebrate the numbers, but we bring emphasis to the how. I know we come to these gatherings, we go, oh, Whataburger, woo, everything is blue. We bleed orange, yeah. And then you go home and you open the door and it goes and you go, ah, ah. Five o'clock, we'll see you guys later, okay? Have a good day. the way it is. This is called business. So if the business isn't the problem, then what's the problem? I get called into organizations to talk about creating an own it culture all the time. And there are three levels that we got to approach this at. First of all, there's the C level. The fact is, if we're not living it as leaders, then we become the victims of our culture. And there's a lot of things we can blame as opposed to the masters of our culture. I want to be your vision interpreter. I want to help these people understand their role in what we're trying to accomplish, to get them excited and pumped up about that role. Do you own it? See, you can't own it if you don't do it on purpose. One of my favorite things to do is actually do some secret shopping. So I'm going to come out to your organization and experience what it's like. A lot of us think that if we hire right, that that's that's it you just got to hire the right people and the idea is that we actually create a culture michael has obviously done his homework because he talks about things that are specific to our industry to what our people are facing in the field they're moving on to the next tornado they need somebody on the outside going by the way this was you that rocked you nailed that and their confidence starts to go he has so much insight into exactly what your sales force or your company is going through. Then he comes and he knocks it out of the park. We can work with organizations in creating that momentum, in supporting that momentum on every level, whether it's working with the upper echelon, whether it's equipping that middle management, or whether it's igniting and equipping that frontline people. And we can keep that momentum going throughout the year to make that true change in creating your vision. Have you ever worked with that person who's super nice, nicest person in the world, until you add a little tornado? And then they mutate, they go <laughs> Look at me, do not make eye contact right now. That's such a strong choice that you're making somebody else make a choice. And they're looking at you like, oh, good Lord. Um, subconsciously, you are reaching into that bag like crazy. What am I gonna do, what am I gonna say? And out it came. You are all in sales. That's what problem solving is. We need an attitude of ownership. They have an event that is focused to launch into a vision, and then we keep that vision going throughout the year with motivation and training. When you have both, you've got momentum. See, a person with skill sets that knows they're there, that practices in there, those are the people that reach in when it gets hard. That's how you know you own it.